You're an attorney. You made a lot of money throughout your career. You're still working at 70. So you're a hard charger, right? You call yourself Boston. <laughs> With all of that, that's why retirement is so hard for a lot of people. It's like you're giving up that paycheck. Right? And then now you have to create all of the income or a majority of the income on your own accord with the assets that you've saved. It's from Boston. You just signs of Boston? It's Yeah, they're from Boston and their name is Boston. Love it. Okay, good. Yeah. Like the band Boston? I think it's probably like the city Boston. What Do uh, you know any songs by the band Boston? Oh, sure. I know several, but I can't remember their name. Yeah, no, they're, they're <laughs> yes, I know that. more than a feeling. That's their big one. More than a feeling, you know. Yeah, that's fine. I just have to hear them. You know? Yeah. All right. Hoping you'll spitball this on your podcast. Well, Boston, you're in luck. Here we go. <laughs> I'm a new listener, and I noticed that people mention their cars and favorite drinks. And he's like, why the hell do they do that? <laughs> it's stupid. Yeah, so that Joe that? can get into the mindset of the listener. Yeah, I don't know how it started. I do. Because people used to say, I listen to your podcast while I'm driving. And you said, well, you got to tell me what kind of car you drive. Or some people said, I listen to your podcast while I'm having a beer. What kind well, of I'm beer? walking my dog. And yeah. then what kind of pet? So that's how that started. Yeah, because we need to know a little bit more. We want to put a face yeah. to the, the question that comes in. Right. Yeah, I was talking to an individual who was like, yeah, I listen to a couple of your podcasts. Why do people talk about that? I was like, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> If you're not part of the family, you don't know. Yeah, you have to go back 300 episodes, and we'll explain it. All right, so that's the reason, Boston. So we need I need to get in the mood. I need to understand, you know, hey, if you're driving, what are you driving? And then sometimes I, we would just make it up. And I'd be like, oh, I bet this person drives a Subaru. Right. And lo and behold, they drove a Subaru. Subaru, yeah. Or like a Ford F-150. That's the most popular car here on Your Money, Your Wealth. Ford yeah. F-150s. Agreed. And I think, um, what's the most popular drink? Old Fashioned. Old Fashioned. Old Fashioned. And, yeah, I love an Old Fashioned. And uh, and beer. Yeah, like craft beer. Craft a lot, beer. Of, lot, lot of craft beer people. Yep. Um, a lot of, not a craft beer person. I know you're not. But I will do an Old Fashioned. <laughs> I will do that. You know, if you ever get a drink on the rocks, now everyone just puts it in like one big fancy rock. Oh, yeah. I've seen this. Are you like a fancy rock person or do you like to have multiple cubes? <laughs> Me personally, I like beer. <laughs> I <don't really laughs> have beer. Hmm. But when I do, I would like multiple cubes. Multiple. I don't want the one. Yeah, you're... Hey, and I saw something on Instagram. I thought about you, Big Al. You did. It, it's a, it was a um, mugged. Frosted mugged beer fridge. <laughs> That's what I need. I was like, I'm buying that for my garage, <laughs> and I'm going to buy that for Big Al's. I need one. Frosted yeah. so, uh, so beer we, mug. So we can actually put frozen food in, in our freezer instead of mugs. Yeah. That'd be cool. Um, okay. So <laughs> let's get back to Boston here. So let's see. My, fa my wife drives a 2021 Volvo XC60. No, that's sexy. Safe. Very safe. <laughs> Um, I drive a 2013 Toyota RAV4. Yes, I need a new car. I'm planning on getting one next year. A RAV4? They still make those? Yeah. No, this is from 2013. I know, but I know, but they don't still make those today, do they? And yeah, aren't they the, like kind of the small little hatchback kind of things? Yeah, they're smaller. Well, because so you, if you're going to come a 2024 to Toyota, Toyota RAV4, Boston, you need to drive a better car than a RAV4. <laughs> they are still making them. Well, he's getting a new one. He's yeah. he already. Uh, I think that. I dated a girl that drove a Rav Four. Yeah, it didn't last. <laughs> didn't didn't work out. It did, no, it didn't last. Very long. <laughs> uh, Got it. Okay. Here, all right, let's get into his story. Here's our story. I'm a 73 year old semi retired lawyer. All right, 90 percent retired. Work is very low stress. Oh yeah, earn about fifty five thousand dollars a year, but could retire 100 percent at any time. Best not to include this income in any financial planning. Wife is 71, retired. Our finances, taxable, in the bank, $1.6 Long-term capital gains and stock funds total $800,000. My IRA is $1.9 million, RMD starting this year. Roth IRAs, $1.9 million. Look at the big... It's amazing, right? Big Boston. <laughs> 1.9 in a Roth? Wife has about... 700 in a Roth. Yeah. 
Yeah, no wonder why life is stress free for you. <laughs> Inherited IRA, wife's got about 20 grand. HSA, 140. Got a Vanguard, Transamerica, variable annuity, $530,000. Residence, 1.2, no mortgage. Total, 7 million plus. No mortgage or other debt. Boston. Social Security. Mine and wife annualized $75,000. Thank you, Boston. Of a very good long term care policy, wife does not have one. Our annual expenses for the last three years have averaged $250,000, including taxes. Big part of that, around 20% or $50,000, has been travel, something we will not last forever, in that we have splurged. I think that's supposed to be splurged. I like splurged. I like splurged too. Yeah. The guy's got $7 million. <laughs> he can say whatever the hell he wants. That said, a conservative spending target is $250,000, including taxes of $50,000 a year. We have one daughter, age 30. She is in a low earning profession, and she would like to, we would like to leave her three to four million dollars after Massachusetts estate taxes. A rule of thumb for Massachusetts estate taxes ten thousand dollars. Ten ten percent. I'm sorry, ten percent. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, man, cool. As we move further into retirement, my perception of these assets have changed. If our spend from our assets is one hundred seventy five thousand. 250 minus 75 Social Security. Our tax accounts, IRAs, and HSA total 3.6 million, which is sufficient for 20 years spending, ignoring inflation. That takes us both to our early 90s. These accounts are worldwide 60 40 Vanguard mutual funds. And with even subpar growth, could carry us into our mid 90s. My working assumption is 5% a year. If we end up selling our house and moving to assisted living or some sort of um, uh, I'm sorry, moving to an assisted living of some sort. That's another five to six years of living expenses. That leaves our daughter or ourselves if we need it. The Roth IRA, which we can draw from as necessary to hold down our tax rate, I'm hoping to grow this to $3 million. The variable annuity, which she can annuitize. We bought this in the mid-90s, so interest rates, uh, so the interest rate tables are, very, uh, are favorable. Do you think we're thinking about this correctly? I swing between thinking that we are underspending to thinking we are overspending. Your thoughts and advice would be appreciated. Boston. All right. First of all, we don't give advice. You give your thoughts. Yeah, we can do thoughts. Opinions. Spitballs. Right. All right. Seven million dollars. Yep. About six million liquid. Six million. Uh, he's 73 years old. He's going to continue work at 55. He's got Social Security at 75. So that's $125,000 of income. He wants to spend 250. He needs 125 for the next couple of years. And then uh, 150,000 from there at 6 million. 150 into 6 is that's pretty low. I mean, if you take a 5% distribution rate, that's uh, 300,000, which is probably a fine rate at age in the 70s. So he's peeling two and a half percent from the portfolio. Yeah, yeah. So you you are. Um, he's got a sixty forty portfolio over the next thirty years. That thing is going to grow in probably a five percent. You're going to pull two and a half percent out. So six percent over the twenty thirty years at two and a half percent is going to be a lot of money for your daughter. Yeah, you, yeah. It's going to keep growing. Plus the house we haven't even included. We haven't even included the annuity. So uh, yeah, the, you're you can spend more if you want. But I think, Joe, what he's thinking of is let's have the Roth IRAs, maybe the house, that goes to our daughter. We'll just spend the other money, which is actually, I think, the right way to think about it. If you don't need the money, then the Roth is the best asset to pass to your daughter, to your heirs. Why? Because it's 100% tax-free for them. There's no stretch IRA rule anymore, meaning that she'll have to, when she inherits it, she'll have to distribute it over 10 years. 10 years of a very high regular IRA could be pretty taxing for her or for any beneficiary for that matter. So I like the way you're thinking. I think you could spend more. You could you could spend a fair amount more if you want to, but that's your choice. It's up to you. You're spending a couple hundred. I mean, that's still a pretty good number, Boston. It, it's it's a good it's a good but, clip. But but you're not going to be spending that forever. But then you have to think about long term care. You got to think about that. I would just keep, continue to run the numbers as you're running it, and then just run different scenarios. Let's say zero growth, negative growth. Um, 
right? Just, but I think what you're going through is what every retiree goes through. You're an attorney. You made a lot of money throughout your career. You're still working at 70. So you're a hard charger, right? You call yourself Boston, <laughs> right? And so with all of that, that's why retirement is so hard for a lot of people. It's like you're giving up that paycheck, right? And then now you have to create all of the income or a majority of the income on your own accord with the assets that you've saved. And you've done a hell of a job saving way more than most. And guess what? He's got 7 million plus and he's still worried about this. He's still running the numbers, which is very, very normal. So yes, I think you continue to do what you're doing. Just make sure that you're monitoring it. You have to look at this a little bit on an ongoing basis, not looking at the market every day. But I think if you have a 60-40 split, low-cost Vanguard funds, you like Vanguard, that's fine. right? And then, But just the distributions, where are you going to be taking the money? Do you want to continue to do Roth conversions because you still have how much money in retirement accounts? A, a pretty good amount. Um, a hundred one point uh, nine million. Yeah, almost two million. Right, and so it, it's figuring out a distribution spe- um a strategy. So now you're pulling from your non-retirement accounts, and then you're converting more, um, and then that's going to give you more control. But if you want to look at strategies for you know healthcare down the road, you probably want to have money in a retirement account because of the tax deduction that you're going to get from healthcare will offset some of those costs. So, I mean, there's all sorts of different things that you could button this thing up on. Um, but from a high level spitball, I, I mean, I think you're doing great. And thanks for uh, checking us out. All right. I've had enough Celsius. Well, um, it's better than the sodium. Yeah, I think so. I think it's a little healthy. I don't know. Neither one's healthy, but I like that better than the 1,000 milligram sodium when you drank this morning. It was electrolytes, Alan. Electrolytes are good. I'll tell you, if you're going on a 20-mile hike uh, in the in the sun, yeah, sure, I get it. But not just sitting there in an office. My body that's, feels like I'm going on a 20-mile hike when I'm in the office. That's my two cents. Yeah. <laughs>